guys, Jeff off the Gridiron. Today's topic is homemade fire starters, homemade fire pucks. Great to have in a pack. Great to have when you go into the woods and you're not ready to start that fire in a difficult situation. Easy to make. I'm going to show you how to make them here at home. Hi guys, welcome Stick back. Around. Jeff Allen off the Gridiron. As shown in my past video, fire pucks can be repurposed. This was an original one I used in a little uh, cook pan with that kind of taper. You could use um, an old cup. And uh, here's one that we've been able to light and relight and salvage from the fire to be put out and reused over and over again. What we need is a uh, something to warm and melt our wax. Today we're using just standard paraffin wax from the grocery store. Comes in a, a block that looks like this. We need obviously a source of heat. We uh, we have this upside down little grate to to uh, put our pot on. And we're gonna melt our wax in the pot. Egg carton is a perfect one. Cardboard egg carton is a perfect container sized pouch. And when it's all apart, we can cut them all apart and that'll make this many 18 pucks that we can just throw right in the fire. Now for some of the, the contents besides just wax, we've got a bag full of pencil shavings and we're going to put a little, little pinch of dryer lint in the bottom of each, uh, each of these little containers here, the egg cartons. And then we're going to take the melted wax and pour over and fill each of these egg cartons up. Okay, we've got our heat source lit. We can also use uh, do a stove top if you're careful. We're going to put this little riser over top. And now we're going to break the wax down into smaller pieces. It's quite fragile. It's able to snap apart. So as we wait for the wax to mount, we're going to take some dryer lint and line the bottom of each of these little fire pouches. I guess they're not really pucks. Fire starters. Dryer lint contains any number of natural fibers and man-made fibers. Man-made fibers are flammable. Certainly the cotton uh, is also quite, quite flammable. And uh, this serves to start and burn rather well. So again, we're gonna just put these fibers in there. Now over top of each of these, we're going to take our pencil shavings and we're going to fill the container with the shavings. I'm just going to shake them all over top to cover each of the uh, each of the little pockets here. Okay, you can see our wax starting to melt there now. We're going to get the rest of our little fire pockets ready. I have put in the shavings and we're just evening out the volume of shavings in each one, patting them down. And momentarily we'll be ready to pour that wax in and that wax will just soak right into all this material including the cardboard and form hard little fire fire starter pucks or, or fire pucks if you will. I think we're going to need quite a bit of wax, so we'll keep this wax melting. It's coming. Like I said, these are great to have in any any kit, whether it be emergency kit or at camp. Uh, sometimes, even the most schooled bushcrafter always. Uh, I mean, it's one thing to have uh, 
to have a ferro rod, but sometimes you finding that that tinder that's going to ignite is sometimes challenging. So this is a quick way. This is also a good fun activity to do with family. Very simple, relatively safe, and uh, they they do learn a lot about fire and what what needs to be available for a fire to start. I know my boys still kind of struggle with the getting small enough tinder material to start their fire but this is one way to demonstrate how, how how simple and easy making a fire starter can be and great to have in your kit. We've taken all our shavings or pencil shavings and scattered them around evenly packing down each of these pockets in this cardboard egg carton. From there, we're waiting for our wax to dry and then we're gonna drizzle it over top and allow that to soak right into the cardboard. And slowly coming along. So we have to work fairly quickly to pour this out, but uh, with the pot being so warm, this wax should be able to pour out fairly easily. You just want to pour, pour to fill so it comes up to the surface. That way you know that everything's being touched and coated by that wax. Okay. So we had one block of wax and it did about 10 pucks. So we're going to keep melting this candle down and uh, continue filling in the rest of our fire starter little packets. Okay, we're going to take our, our candle out and continue to pour in the rest of these little pockets that didn't get any wax. Now we're going to let that harden and uh, we'll break them apart. If you didn't have a source of uh, ignition, you could always use your heat gun. Okay, just as those pucks are cooling down, we're going to demonstrate to you what we've made and how effective they are. So we're going to take our, uh, this is not uh, a ferro rod per se, but it is the uh, uh, version of that with a magnesium uh, kind of rod and the striker. So not near as hot as a ferrocerium rod, but uh, it works much the same. So we'll show you how this works. So with your knife or another sharp tool, you just scrape up some of uh, the material and it just breaks apart very easily to make a little little bundle in the middle. Take some of our filings off our magnesium block here. Quite easily it starts. We'll try it off to the side, back in the middle.
very hot localized flame in the center where we broke the fragments of the puck apart and stacked them together. Now it really creates that, in essence, it creates that wick for the uh, fire to continue growing. It's starting to widen out at the base now, but it's really stayed home to that isolated location in the center. That would be quite easily to start a fire bundle held over the top and then transport that off to the side. Alternatively, you could break this apart into pieces and light the pieces, whereby that would make the tinder puck last much longer. So if this is lighting the edge of your tinder bundle off to the side and it started, you can now take a piece of bark perhaps, smother it, blow it out, and once cooled, your puck can be repurposed and reused over and over again. I think this puck has started probably a dozen, dozen fires. And this was the original puck here. So it does last a very long time. Okay, the the pucks are almost dry to the touch. They could take a little while longer. You can see how they started bleeding through on the bottom a little bit, but that's quite all right. That just means full saturation of the wax into all our material, all the, the shavings and the dryer lint that's on the bottom. Now all we need to do is carefully cut these apart and we'll have all these different separate packets to go in a dry spot ready when we need them. Okay with the pucks cool we can cut them apart. Again there's no real trick to cutting them apart just cutting that cardboard and you can see the height of the wax so we can trim off the excess cardboard so it might fit a little easier into uh, into wherever we're storing it whether it be a Ziploc bag or our, our kit so there you go we can leave the cardboard on it's obviously flammable if you did this with a, a different material um, a, you know a plastic carton all you would need to do I think I would spray the bottom of that carton with spray like cooking spray and that oil would allow these pucks to fall out relatively easily alternatively if you did one at a time in any of your stainless steel containers they will they'll fall right out but there is a perfect tinder puck you could throw that right in the fire as is break it apart and provide you lots of surface area to use We'll demonstrate. Again, break it apart. There is all the material. It's like a big cookie. All that is flammable material infused with the wax. That is a giant lightable candle. Let's see if this will take a spark. Well guys, thanks so much. We took uh, about half an hour and we made up a bunch of these these individual tinder pucks. We can throw some of these in our, in, in our different bags, different kits, and always have them on hand. Again, super cheap to make. I encourage everyone to make them. Try to get your kids involved as well. Please click like, subscribe, and share. Thanks for watching. My, uh, my channel is growing and I, I really appreciate all the support and questions and answers that you've given me. Until next time, it's been Jeff off the Gridiron. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your outdoors.